All right, all right, peace and wellness family. I hope that y'all are well and happy and whole and all that good stuff. Y'all, we have a full moon peaking in Scorpio on April 23rd at 7.49 p.m. Eastern time. Now, here's the thing. The shadow period for this full moon already started yesterday, 420. Okay, I hope everybody enjoyed their 420. Uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> and the shadow period will last up until April 26, y'all. So my intention for this video is to discuss the full moon in Scorpio. Um, I want to identify some wellness practices that we can implement in order to use this energy for our wellness. Okay, y'all. So let's get right into it. First off, like I said, I hope everybody enjoyed their 420. Baby, so the, the, uh, on April 19th, the day before 420, I had, uh, we had ordered some food and, you know, we was having a, a, a good time and baby, I don't know. I had some curry, right? I don't know if they didn't burn the curry, you know, all my Caribbean people, you know, you're supposed to burn the curry in order to, you know, uh, reduce the likelihood of the curry impacting you in a not so good way. Okay. <laughs> baby, I don't know if they didn't burn the curry. I don't know if they didn't put the ginger in the curry. But I ate that curry that night, and from four from April nineteenth all the way through four twenty, nausea like crazy. My stomach was cramping. I was not into it, so I was literally just chewing ginger, chewing ginger, laying in the bed, really recovering, trying to get my life together. Okay, so April twentieth, yesterday, y'all know was the uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia fight. Baby, I was supposed to go out to go see, to go watch it. I could not get out the bed. So I'm laying in the bed, y'all, chewing ginger, drinking water, still drinking water, y'all, still recovering, <laughs> drinking water, and watching a fight. That fight was so good last night. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia fight was so good last night, y'all. I was standing up in my bed. I was in my bed standing up screaming. Baby. That thing was a fight. If you're not into boxing, you know, you you probably, you don't understand. Honey, that was a fight. I was, and, and y'all, let me sort of fill in my stomach. Hey, you, you know how it feels like when there's a lot of water on your stomach? Like, it just feels like a lot of water, like a lot of nausea, and it just feels like a lot of liquid. I, all of that. I'm standing in the bed like, oh my God, oh my God, going crazy. Stomach feel like a whole ocean pool. Okay. <laughs> a whole deep infinity pool, baby. But I was so hyped. So shout out to Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney for putting on a show because that got me up and gave me all the energy I needed. I'm feeling much better today. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. So I come before you today with as much energy as I could muster up. Uh, so I got on my mustard. As much energy as I could muster up to discuss this full moon in Scorpio. Baby, this full moon season, this Mercury retrograde season, this whole year, things is just happening. <laughs> things is just happening. And this full moon in Scorpio, I feel like kind of embodies, it encompasses everything that has just been happening, right? And I say that because y'all, when we talk about Scorpio energy, we're talking about a fixed water sign, which is really almost like opposing energy within itself, right? Now, Scorpios are known for being very passionate, very alluring, but also Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. And Pluto is our planet of rebirth and generational transformation. I say that because oftentimes when we have a full moon in Scorpio, we know full moons are all about revealing and releasing. Y'all, we can look for things to be very very shockingly different, very shockingly revealing, very shockingly transitioning and changing, right? Major transitions, major transformations, but really changes and transformations that push your boundaries, push you out of your comfort zone, right? Um, almost like shocking opportunities coming up, things that will surprise you about yourself will be revealed and come up. Also, people kind of pushing your boundaries, again, situations pushing your boundaries to show you who you are and show you some things that you may want to release, right? So with that being stated, y'all, 
Uh, when we talk about a full moon in Scorpio, we're talking about intense emotions, right? Because we know the full moon is it raises the tides, right? And we are 70% water. So naturally, our tides are elevated, our emotions are elevated. So we're talking about heightened emotions, intense emotions. Uh, and, and specifically under Scorpio full moon, it's happening very rapidly and very fluidly. Moving through very intense emotions at a rapid pace is highly likely during Scorpio full moons, okay? So just keep that in mind. We're also talking about, again, shocking opportunities, surprising revelations, right, that will come up and really challenge you to step outside of your comfort zone, challenge you to see yourself in different ways that you're not used to seeing yourself. So it's a lot of like almost ego challenges, right? Like uh, challenges centered in self-identity, showing yourself aspects of you that you may not even be aware of, right? So really kind of like forcing you to look in a mirror, a lot of heavy shadow work centered in mirror work at this time. Now, of course, we have a couple of other planetary alignments that are impacting this full moon in Scorpio. And I want to get into that. Y'all, y'all see? If for those of you who don't know, I'm moving. Okay, so I didn't even realize you could see like my bags and, and books and everything in the back. I'm in the process of moving. So I got bags and books packed up back there. If I would have known, I would have turned it. Okay. <laughs> y'all see, you're seeing all my businesses. Okay. But yes, y'all, I'm in the process of moving. God's will, everything is uh will will be well. It is well thus far, thankfully, and and that's what you're seeing back here. I wanted to identify that before I move into this next uh upcoming planetary alignment that's going to impact the full moon of Scorpio. Number one, I want to talk about the conjunctions, right? And when I say the conjunctions, I'm talking about Uranus and Jupiter conjunct with the Sun in in Taurus, right? And the reason that this conjunction is important is so first off, shout out to all the Tauruses. Okay, we are we are officially in Taurus season. Shout out to all my strong, bullheaded Tauruses. Okay, all my stubborn, think they know it all Tauruses. Okay, all of my strong willed, big boss Tauruses. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to all my Chris Brown. When they go low, I go to Lucifer Tauruses. Okay. <laughs> Big petty energy. Uh, Chris Brown really popped it off for y'all for Taurus season. Okay. He really, he he said, uh, Big Taurus energy, baby. Okay. What, what are we going to do? Uh, I, uh, listen, that if y'all want to know anything about a Taurus, Chris Brown. Okay, y'all want to know Taurus energy? Listen to that Chris Brown diss track. That's Taurus energy. Welcome to Taurus season. Okay. <laughs> our sun is in Taurus, and we know our sun is a representative of the divine source as well as our divine self, our highest self. So keep that in mind. And we also have Uranus, which is our planet of innovation, as well as generational technology. Okay, keep that in mind. And we have Jupiter, our planet of expansion. Family, all of them are conjunct in Taurus. They are opposing our full moon in Scorpio. Anytime we have an opposition, that is where you look for where the challenges may arise, where the challenges may come up. Something we need to be mindful of during this time period we will be challenged with sudden changes and transformation when it comes to generational technology, sudden changes and transformation that will push us out of our comfort zone because of that innovation, that innovative, creative energy coming from that Uranus opposition. So we'll be challenged to push, to, to, to step outside of our comfort zone, step outside of our norm, do things in a very different, innovative, unique way, okay? And also sudden changes and transformations centered around the ego, understanding who we are from a divine spiritual lens, as opposed to our self-identity, really pulling back the layers of ego. And if you are in the wellness community, first off, butterflies in the sky. Come on, tribe. Come on, wellness community. If you are in my tribe, shout out to the wellness community. I love y'all dearly. Y'all know we are reading A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, which is all centered around doing the work to 
unpack the ego in all aspects of the ego, right? We're talking about the pain body. We're talking about self-identity. We're talking about our relationship with possessions and all of that stuff. This is the re really, truly the divine time to do that work, to have ch uh, major changes and sh shifts and transformations centered around self-identity. And how do you feel about you? What is your self-identity based in? What is your ego based in? What is your relationship with the ego? Okay, so if you are in the wellness community, if you are in the tribe, you know that we've been doing this work for a while. We'll continue doing the work. And really, during this time of this full moon in Scorpio, family, it is going to be a time where that ego work is going to push us out of our comfort zone, but really with the intention of elevating us and taking us to a new level in our spiritual walk and spiritual journey. And this is the thing. I, I move to the spiritual aspect, right? Because everything that we do, all of the changes, the transformations, pushing out of our comfort zone, really is going to come from a divine aligned spiritual space, right? And I say that because we have Neptune trining our full moon in Scorpio. Now, when we have a trine, a trine brings harmony. And essentially, when I say bring harmony, I'm talking about what we have those challenges. We know that the changes and transformations and stepping out of our comfort zone is going to be our challenge, right? We know that there will likely be a generation change or shift in check technology that's going to push people out of their comfort zone. Let me tell y'all, I want, I want, let me touch on that before I go deep into the Neptune tr uh, uh, transit. That TikTok ban, that TikTok ban, a lot of people think that's going to be the major shift in generational technology that's going to affect people, that's going to push people. As I'm saying that, I'm, I'm like, I know people are going to think it's the TikTok ban, right? That, something else. That and. That plus and also, okay? And plus also that, okay? So that will be a major shift that will kind of push people out of, our, out of our comfort zone as a generation, as a collective, right? But also there will be something else. There will be something else, a generational shift in technology and media, social media specifically, something going on with technology that will affect the collective as a whole and push other people out of our comfort zone, okay? And, and listen, I'm not even, y'all know I'm not into the conspiracy theories, the tribe, wellness community, y'all know how I feel about it. I'm not even a, 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 I'm not even one, I'm not the tenfold hat person, but baby, put my tenfold hat on, put my tenfold hat on because it's going to, it's going to be that and, that and something else. Okay. Something else that that's going to kind of sneak up on the people. Because remember with the full moon in Scorpio, it's surprising, shocking revelations, shocking transformations, opportunities that come out of nowhere, right? I'm talking about like being pulled in the office. Hey, we want to promote you or, hey, we got this new opportunity. Hey, we need you to travel over here. Hey, we was we was considering you for this. And it's like me who meet shocking things like that, unexpected ones. So the TikTok band people are expecting, people have been talking about for a while. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be something else. It's going to be something else that will affect the generation when it comes to technology, that will affect the collective when it comes to technology, okay? So again, put... put Put my hat on, put my tin full. I should have had me a stain. This, I need to be a props girl, okay? I should have had my, my stainless steel pot I could have put over my head wrap, okay? Because I'm telling you, all is happening. Now, let's get into this trine of Neptune. All of it is happening for our wellness to elevate us spiritually, though. The changes, the transformations, the revelations is going to draw you closer to your spiritual journey, bring you deeper into your spiritual journey because of that trine with Neptune. Neptune is our planet of spirituality. Neptune is our planet of divine spiritual connection. Neptune is our planet that brings us intuitions or heightens intuitions and dreams. So right now, a lot of intense dreams, a lot of intense revelations coming in the dreams. And I'm going to tell you all something else. Be mindful, be mindful of your dreams and who's in them. Okay, be mindful of people who pop up in your dreams. You need to give them a call, check in, do a text. Because more than likely, the people who pop up in your dreams over this next week 
are people who themselves are going to have a major change and transformation in their life, or they will play a role in your major change and transformation in your life. So pay attention to the people who are in your dreams, even in, in, including people who are no longer with us, ancestors who may come up in your dreams, okay? Pay attention to that as well, all right? Because again, those may be the ancestors that you need to be working with. All right. So again, pay attention to the people who pop up in your dreams. That's going to be important. But that trine, that harmony with Neptune means that all of it, all of the changes and transformation are working for our wellness and bringing us closer to our spirituality, closer to our spiritual connection, heightened intuition right now. So really pay attention to your intuition and allow your intuition to guide you. Have a strong relationship with your intuition. Okay, and let your intuition be the guide. What opportunities should you take? What change of transformation should you say yes to? Okay, and I keep on emphasizing opportunities, y'all, because that's what a lot of it is going to come from. Real random opportunities just popping up. Pay attention to your emails. Keep up, you know, really keep up with uh, people checking in on you because you'll be surprised with what is being handed to you during this time. All for our wellness, challenging you by stepping out of your ego, stepping out of your comfort zone, but for your wellness. Okay. Now, so I talked about the trine. Uh, Y'all know I got my notes. Wellness community, you don't need to take notes. Of course, the notes will be dropped in the Patreon right after this is over. But if you're not in the wellness community, feel free to take notes, shorthand these parts, and then for the journal prompt, go full out. Okay. I talked about the trine with Neptune. I talked about the opposing sun, Jupiter, Uranus, uh, and Taurus. Other trines that are important. Mars, our planet of action, as we know, again, trying is all about harmony and what we should be doing, how we should be handling this energy for our wellness. Mars is our planet of action. That's essentially meaning take the opportunity, take action. When those opportunities come up, when you're challenged to really face yourself and step outside of your comfort zone, do it. You know how sometimes y'all... You know, sometimes I'll be like, this is not the time to act, y'all. This is the time to be still. This is not the time to act. This is the time to like kind of rest. You know, that's not one of these times. This is the time to take action. And let me tell you something. I wanted to say, I got to say this, right? Because uh, people often ask me, do I teach classes on astrology and the planetary alignments? But number one, I don't consider myself an astrologist, right? Um, and, and it's just me personally, because I, I really respect the field of astrology and people who are astrologists. Those who I know that really consider themselves astrologists, like they, 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 it's it's literally like astrology is life for them. I'm not that girl. Astrology is not life for me. Spirituality is life for me, but astrology is not. However, it's something I'm very passionate about. With that being stated, I do not teach classes on astrology, but the way I teach when I do this you could learn everything you need to know, right? So as I'm talking to you and I'm explaining what trines are, what oppositions are, what each planet uh, represents and how to understand and connect the dots. This is really a class within itself if you pay attention, right? Pay close attention. So that's why I, I explain things in detail because as of right now, I have no desire to teach classes on astrology. I don't see it for me, you know, you never say never. But uh, with that being stated, for those who want to learn, I like to teach in a way that you could learn from what I already do. All right. So again, when we have a trine with Mars, Mars is our planet of action, trines are harmonies, right? So that means that this is a good time to take action. If, if Mars was opposing this full moon, I'll say be still. If Mars was in Taurus, I'll say be still. Don't move. Don't do too much. Be still. Right. But I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it's a trine. It's harmony. So take action. You need to take the opportunity. You need to do it now. Have that do it now energy. Have that do it now uh, 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 fire in you. Take the action. Take the opportunity and do the work now. Another trine that's going to be important is Saturn. And Saturn is our planet of boundaries, right? So that's why I said, you know, a, a lot of this is going to be about pushing us out of our comfort zone, testing our boundaries, and you need to do this. This is not a time for you to, how can I put it? This is not a time for you to be strict on 
yeses and nos as far as like, this is my boundary and this is what I'm going to do, or this is my vision. And this is only what I will tolerate and only what I will have. I don't, okay. You offer me this opportunity. I don't want that one because I want this one. Hmm. This is not the time to have heavy restrictions on yourself about what you will and will not do because sometimes y'all not for everybody, but sometimes what you will and will not do is about being stuck in your comfort zone. Okay. Sometimes your boundaries are centered around being stuck in your comfort zone. This is the time where that trine with Saturn, where we are, have harmony with boundaries. We have harmony with a uh, restriction. We really want to challenge ourselves to kind of elevate beyond our comfort zone, which means you need to open up and expand your boundaries. Okay. Open up expand your boundaries, step out of your comfort zone. It will be good for you. Okay. So again, you're not, you're not doing anything that goes against your wellness, but you are doing things that take you out of your comfort zone, which could feel like you're going against your wellness, but you are not. And that's the whole discussion within itself that a lot of people need to have within. A lot of people have to unpack. What is your definition of wellness for you? Okay. Because oftentimes People said boundaries and restrictions, not based on their wellness. They said it based on their comfort zone. Some people's boundaries and restriction is centered in their trauma. Mm -hmm. Centered in their trauma. Some of y'all, your boundaries and restrictions are a coping mechanism of your trauma, not a tool to enhance your wellness. And that's the ego work. Okay, that's the ego work. Well, in this community, y'all know, like I said, we've been reading a new earth and we've been talking about the pain body. And for those of you who do not know, study Eckhart Tolle, read uh, uh, The Power of Now and a New Earth, where he talks about the pain body in a sense of it being a mass of negative energy, a collection of neg negative energy that a lot of people identify with. A lot of people make that a part of their self-identity. And that negative energy sometimes, most times, is coming from trauma. And your trauma is informing your self-identity. And then that self-identity informs your boundaries, right? So that means that your boundaries are coming from your trauma as opposed to your wellness. Huh? Okay. So I know it's a lot of connecting the dots. Like I said, if you in the wellness community, we've been having this discussion, but this is the time to really assess your ego, assess how you identify yourself. Is your self-identity centered in trauma or wellness? Therefore, are your boundaries coping from trauma or are they conducive to your wellness? Where are your boundaries coming from? Okay, really pay attention to that. And the journal prompts I'm going to give will help deepen that understanding. Okay, um, and then squaring. We have Pluto. Of course, Pluto is the ruling planet of Scorpio. So a square can also bring a challenge as well. But the thing about a squaring challenge, the difference between an opposing planet and a squaring planet and the type of challenge they bring. A squaring planet brings us a challenge in a sense of it will feel uncomfortable. It will feel almost like a conflict. And opposition is a challenge where it forces you to look at yourself. So this is how I can compare it. Opposing planets, see it as like a mirror work. Go within, look at yourself. Yes, it's a challenge, but it's really about the internal challenge. The squaring is the external challenge. It's like a boxing match, two fighters squaring off, okay? So squaring, we have Pluto. That means that a lot of the transitions, transformations are gonna come from external sources, will come from the outside. That's what I'm talking about, like promotions, uh, changes and transformations when it comes to like relationships with family, friends, partners, etc. A lot of different things are going to change and transform externally that will lead to expansion. It will lead to abundance. It will lead to prosperity. It will lead to a deeper connection to your spiritual self. Okay. But again, pushing you out of your comfort zone. Okay. Now we talked about the planetary alignment. I went over the energy impact. Let me just make sure I touched on everything. Intense emotions, uh, increased intuition, increased dreams, spiritual activity. Okay. Pay attention to signs and omens um, about things that you should do, opportunities you, you should take, etc. 
um, surprising revelations about our needs and where we are, pushing us out of our comfort zone, uh, the challenges, major transformations and transitions. I talked about that. And OK, the urge. And this is where our, our harmony with Mars comes in, the urge to be more decisive and take action now. OK, so that's our planetary alignment and our energy impact. And again, the full moon peaks on April 23rd. We are currently in the shadow period and that should, shadow period will last. I, I said that should have last. <laughs> That shadow period will last <laughs> through April 26th, okay? Now, what to do, what to do. I kind of already touched on some things to do, so I'm going to push through this part briefly, and then we'll quickly move into journal prompts. What to do. Pay attention to your dreams. Check on the people who pop up in them. I talked about that. Um, the second thing to do, pay attention to your desires and opportunities where transitions come up. What are they teaching you? The changes may seem weird and out of your comfort zone, but they are necessary, okay? The third thing to do, mind your emotions. I told y'all full moons bring intense emotions. Mind your emotions, especially in the midst of discomfort. They are revealing fears. When you get pushed out of your comfort zone and you feel this anxiety, this anxiousness, that's fear-based, okay? They are revealing fears or past trauma that need to be addressed. Practice a release ceremony. So your revelations for this full moon, because full moons are all about revealing and releasing, your revelations will be centered in the fears that are stopping you or making you hesitant about stepping out of your comfort zone. And that's what needs to be released during this time. I have a whole video on how to do a release ceremony. Um, you can watch that and, and practice a release ceremony for those fears. Okay. The fourth thing to do, explore deep, intimate connections with loved ones. Do the work to enhance your bond and connection with the people you love. And that's heavily centered in that Scorpio energy because Scorpio energy is very intimate. It's very passionate. It's very alluring, right? Scorpios have the ability to be mysterious, sexy. Scorpio energy is just sexy. OK, so this is a time to build that intimate, passionate uh, relationship with others, but also with yourself. This is a good time to work with divine feminine energy. We know full moon is centered around divine feminine energy. Scorpio, ener Scorpio energy is divine feminine energy, sexy, seductive, alluring, all of that. So if you wanted to take you a nice spiritual bath centered around enhancing uh, your sensuality, enhancing your connection with the divine feminine enhancing your ability to be seductive, definitely do that work. Okay. And in that bath, you can put like rose, honey, some lemon, uh, a, a little, a little, little, little pinch of cinnamon would be good in there. You know, things like that. A little coconut would be good in there. Some orange slices would be nice, you know, but take you a nice divine feminine spiritual bath, but add some calendula, some sunflowers, you know, and really enhance that seductivity, enhance that femininity, enhance that sensuality, enhance that, 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 that allure, okay? And utilize that energy to enhance your relationship with your, your loved ones, especially your partners, okay? You said, oh, Sister Queen said, my husband is the Scorpio child. I know you'll be woe out. Okay, I know you'll be woe out. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Queen. Because huh? Scorpios, one thing about one thing for certain, two things for sure. They're going to make sure you're satisfied. Okay, a Scorpio don't play, child. Scorpio be up. They're going to take you up through there every time. Every time. But really, I, I honestly feel like Scorpios need to, they need a tag on them that say Scorpio. You got to let me opt in to opt out of this. They need a tag Scorpio here. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying. A little overwhelming. Okay. Now, the fifth thing to do. Be mindful of ego-based conflict. Mercury is still in retrograde and will be in retrograde until the 25th. And then y'all know we have a post-retrograde shadow period. So we still are in Mercury retrograde. Okay, so just be mindful of that ego-based conflict. The ego right now um, is really going to be the thing that a lot of people need to work through and face. Okay, and again, I have a journal prompt coming up for that. All right, y'all. So that's your what to do, your planetary alignment, what to do. Let me take a sip of water. 
and then we'll move through these journal prompts, crystals, and herbs. Okay. Y'all ain't got a little peek of water. You know, you got a little, only got a little bit left. You're trying to reserve. Y'all got a little peek of water left in. Okay. Journal prompts. The first journal prompt. Wellness assessment. What expectations have you, what, what expectations do you have? What the, what, 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 what did I write? What did I write? Huh? Then my, then my own, then what, the, what did I write? Uh. I should have proofread, huh? Good God. What expectations do you have for yourself that have become easy to fulfill for you? What expectations do you have for yourself that feel difficult to fulfill for you? Hmm? What expectations do you have for yourself? What expectations do you place on yourself that feel easy for you to fulfill? And what expectations do you place on yourself that feel difficult for you to fulfill? Okay. Wellness assessment. That's a little wellness check-in. Second journal prompt, ego assessment. Let's check that ego. How would you describe yourself? For example, I am blank. List as many as possible. How would you describe yourself? That's how we unpack our self-identity, right? Knowledge of self is key. How would you describe yourself? What is your self-identity based on? Trauma, wellness, coping mechanisms, who people told you you are. People told you you are good at this. So I am this. I am that. People told you, oh, I think you should do this. So I am this. I am that. What is your self-identity based on? As you've evolved, and this is where you'll really be able to see, as you've evolved, how have your self-identity changed or evolved? As you've evolved, how has your self-identity changed or evolved? As you've changed, how has your, or how have your I am's shifted? Hmm. Hmm. None of us are perfect. Let me just say that. Don't only focus on the good. Don't only focus on your highlight reels. Be honest and authentic. This is your journal work. Ain't nobody going to see it but you. I am what? The things that you love, the things that are, are highlights, but also what's that deep work that you need to work on? What's that deep work that you need to pay attention to? How has your self-identity evolved? Third journal prompt, boundary assessment. What puts you on defense? What do people say or do that make you feel defensive? When irritation or frustration arises, what boundary is being pushed for you? Why is that boundary triggering for you? Somebody had commented, on my last YouTube video, they said, uh, they said, Queen, why the journal prompts got to be a book all the time? I, I like to give y'all a few. I like to give y'all a chunk. One journal prompt is a chunk of prompts to get you to think. So when I say, oh, this is the third journal prompt, you know, you're about to get about three questions because I, I like to help push the thinking from the first question. OK. All right. So it got to be a book. So you get five prompts with a friend about 15. Okay, because I need I need y'all to push your thinking, push your thinking. Okay, I'm going to read that again. Boundary assessment, third journal prompt. What puts you on defense? Some people be defensive. What puts you on defense? What do people do or say that make you feel defensive? When irritation or frustration arises, what boundary is being pushed for you? Why is that boundary triggering for you? Why is that boundary triggering for you? And that's how you'll be able to identify those trauma-based uh, boundaries as opposed to those wellness-based boundaries, okay? Fourth journal prompt, intuition assessment. How do you describe your intuition? How much of a role does your intuition play in your decision-making? What, spiritually, physically, mentally, or emotionally, what holistically plays a role in your decision-making? 
how much is how much is each weighted in your decision making process so how much does each one matter hmm? how much does each one matter how much does your intuition your dreams play a role in your decision making how much does the physical the 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 environment being right you know uh having the right affirmations from somebody else confirmation from friends and family how much does the physical play a role how much mentally how much does the way you think about it your mindset optimism versus pessimism play a role in your decision making and then how much emotionally how much do you just go with your feelings you know how much do, do you have to feel okay with it how much does that play a role in your decision making? And again, this is really centered around that Mars energy, right? This is the time to take action. This is the time to be decisive. And your one of your your challenges, really, it, you're going to be urged, you're going to be pushed to be more decisive. So let's talk about that. Let's unpack that. What will help you be more decisive? What would help you be more decisive? What aspect of yourself holistically do you need to work on in order to increase your ability to be decisive? So that's why those journal prompts are functioned the way they are or written the way they are, formulated, I should say, the way that they are, okay? Fifth journal prompt. And wellness community, we talked about this as a collective. When your nervous system is triggered, usually by anxiety, how do you regulate it? And I say that because, again, a lot of us right now will be pushed out of our comfort zone, right? And that could trigger anxiety for people. And when your anxiety is triggered, your nervous system is triggered. So how do you regulate your nervous system? Wellness community, we talked about this, uh, I think, two 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 book club meetings ago uh, where I had mentioned how essentially y'all when the nervous system is triggered the first way you could tell is through breathing right because your nervous system helps regulate your breathing so when your nervous system is triggered, you'll often feel your breathing feel out of whack. Your breathing picks up. Sometimes it's disordered breathing. So if you ever want to know if your nervous system is triggered, check in with your breath. Check in with your breath. And the advice that I will give for that journal prompt, how do you regulate your nervous system? The advice I will give for people who have no idea, the first thing you need to do is breath work. Once you get control of your breath, it's easy to get control of your nervous system and regulate your nervous system. Yes, there are herbs that can help with it. You know, yes, there are pressure points that will help with it. But getting control of that breath is the first thing you need to do. So if you ever find yourself going into a meeting, about to have a tough conversation, doing some type of work with self, you know, in the middle of a discussion that's getting a bit intense and you find that your breath breathing is out of order, that means that your nervous system is disordered. Get that in order and then your thinking will clear up. You can't think clearly with the nervous system that's out of whack. OK, so your your clarity, your mental clarity will increase once you know how to regulate your nervous system. All right. So that fifth journal prompt is really like pay attention because when you're feeling uncomfortable and again the challenges and transformations are pushing you out of your comfort zone all right when you're feeling uncomfortable the first thing you need to do is regulate that nervous system get control of your breath once you got control of your breath it's easy to check in with your mind once it's easy to check in with your mind it's easy to connect to that third eye and check in with spirit okay and then go with your intuition on what to do what you should say how you should move so step by step all right Crystals and herbs, crystals and herbs, five crystals, five herbs. Of course, with the crystals, you can meditate with them, carry them with you, do a mojo bag, etc. First crystal, blue sodalite. Blue sodalite is to enhance that intuition, enhance that third eye energy. Y'all know we got Neptune trining, so it's a good time to have that, that blue sodalite with you, enhance that intuition. Let that intuition be a guide for you. Second crystal, malachite. Malachite helps with ease through transition ease through transition. Okay. Malachite is also good for regulating the emotions as well. Third crystal, aquamarine. Aquamarine is all about courage and decisiveness. Courage and decisiveness. Fourth crystal. Salam, don't, don't start, please. Don't start. Fourth crystal, lava stone. Lava stone is all about courage in the midst of transition. Lava stone is also very beautiful. I love the way lava stone looks. Courage in the midst of transition. Obsidian. Obsidian is for protection as well as enhancing positive energy. Okay. Now herbs. With all of these herbs, I'm honestly going to recommend a spiritual bath or you can drink them. Okay. But a spiritual bath would be good with these herbs. 
but of course you can drink them. Not so much of a smudge bowl. I wouldn't recommend a smudge bowl with these. A smudge bowl for this time, if you want to, more resin based. So uh, like dragon's blood, frankincense, myrrh, more resin based smudge bowls for purification as well as just calming the energy grounding work. Okay. So no smudge. I, I'm not going to say no, follow your own spirit, but I wouldn't advise a smudge bowl for these herbs. Okay. But you can do a resin based smudge bowl. And with a resin based smudge bowl, like frankincense, dragon's blood, myrrh, etc right uh uh with resin based smudge bowls you want to have something like a lavender uh uh potentially even to you something that burns a little bit slower so i was going to say some like basil but you not necessarily basil or bay leaf because they burn rather quickly but you can do like some ground sage some ground palo something to mix in with the resin to kind of even out the burn um that will help kind of uh uh, uh regulate I, I i don't know another word for to describe it but essentially like regulate the burn um it basically like slows down the burn and gives you a nice steady burn so you know do a resin based bowl but definitely add like another herb to be almost like a what do you call it um what's the name for a family uh like how people use jojoba oil for to cut some essential oils what's the what's the name for a carrier that's what a carrier so another herb to be like a carrier okay now these herbs against uh spiritual bath or you can make a tea First herb, comfrey or slippery elm is for peaceful transition. Second herb, uh, I was about to say divination. It's for divination and love energy, enhancing the sensuality, enhancing the seductivity, that Scorpio energy, hibiscus. Hibiscus, divination, enhancing that Scorpio passionate, seductive, alluring love energy. Third herb, rose hip. Rose hip is for intuition and ease. Rose hip is also very good for womb wellness, okay? So for anybody uh, who is a womb carrier, womb holder, womb keeper, and you deal with difficult menstrual cycles, rose hip is very good to incorporate on a daily basis because y'all with rose hip, you know, uh, it's not only good for the external, right? It's not only good for the intuition. It's not only good for the ease. It's not only good for divination. It's really, really good for helping to regulate the menstrual cycle and bring us some ease to the menstrual cycle, okay? So just be mindful of that. Now, willow, fourth herb, willow is for healing and strength healing and strength. And then the fifth herb is chamomile. Okay. The classic chamomile, find it in the grocery store for purification and relaxation. And of course that one is very good to drink. Okay. So running through the herbs again, comfrey, hibiscus, rose hip, willow, chamomile, Running through the crystals again, blue soda light, malachite, aquamarine, lava stone, and obsidian. Okay. Family. Now, Again, full moon in Scorpio peaks April 23rd. We are currently in the shadow period, and that shadow period will last until the 26th. We have a lot of beautiful uh, uh, trines, you know, that will help with this energy. That Neptune energy is great because all of it is about enhancing our connection with our spirit, our ori, our divine self, and really guiding us, allowing it to be a guide for what we should and should not do. This is a good time to take action, a good time to move and go with the flow. Take action, take action. You know, that Scorpio energy is about doing things. Scorpios get it done. Okay, they're not really complacent people. So this is not the time for complacency. This is not the time to spend too much time pondering on what you should do. Follow your intuition and just go. Yes or no? What are you going to do? Right? This is that time. All right, family? I love y'all wellness community. I will see y'all at 4 p.m. for our Sunday film watch party. Y'all, we about to watch the American Society of the Magical Negroes. Okay? Uh, I... I've heard things, but y'all know I like to go. I like to watch for myself. I like to form my own opinion. I like to form my own opinion and get my own thoughts and feels, okay? So I'm going in with a very open mind. I hope the tribe does as well. We shall enjoy that. I'll see y'all at 4 p.m. for our watch party. And everybody else, I will see y'all soon, okay? Much love, y'all. Much peace. If you want to join the wellness community, it's down here, as well as uh, some of my, my moderators are putting it in the chat. Shout out to my moderators, Max. Queen L, Universal Lighthouse, uh, Becky, everybody who comes and supports me as a moderator and the tribe as well for supporting me. Thank you, Sister Queen. I appreciate your love and, and God bless you and your Scorpio. Okay. <laughs> Happy full moon Scorpio family. Much love. Y'all have a good day.